The timeline allows you to make precise, reproducible shows from night to night, as well as creating more complex interactions between the audio and the visual components within your project. Let's take a look at the page itself. So to get to the page, we click on the AI icon, we choose the performance section and choose the middle icon for the timeline page. Once we're on the page, what can we see? So down the bottom, we've got our track area. This is where we'll add the different types of track and control the parameters throughout the timeline. At the top left, we have our timeline select bar. This allows us to load multiple timelines into the same project and easily swap between them during the show. And at the top right, we have our queue select bar. So as we create queues in our project, this list will populate and we can use it either as a visual reference for where we are or as a way to quickly and easily navigate through the timeline. So let's add some tracks to the timeline. So first of all, I'm gonna go down to the bottom left to the icon with multiple blocks and a plus icon. That's our track addition button. We'll give that one a click. So we can see all the different available track types to this current project. All layers of all fixtures within the project will be shown on here. So we can see that I've actually only got one four layer fixture at the moment. We can also add audio tracks for playback of audio, control tracks for setting up more advanced controls such as loops, jumps and turning timecode on and off, and the queue track for creating our queues. So let's add a video layer first. So once I've added a video layer, I can actually drop some media onto that layer itself. So I've got a folder here that I'm just gonna jump to. Here we go. And I'm just gonna drag one of my videos in. And you'll notice that when I drag the clip in, um, it either shows as red or gray. So when it's gray, it's in a good position to let go. There we go, so we can place that just there. So if we give that a quick play, it will do as we expect. We've got a video of some smoke which moves along. Now let's add some parameter control to that. So if I select the layer, once I select the layer, the icon on the bottom left turns into a star with a plus. This is what we actually use to adjust the parameters. So if I give that one a click now, and it will show me all of the available parameter types for this layer type. Um, I'm just gonna press all and add all of them at once. So now that we've got some parameters in there, let's add some control changes. So first of all, I'm going to adjust the RGB of the layer. So I'm going to select the RGB track, then I'm going to left click on the padlock to unlock it, and then I can use the right mouse button to lay keyframe points. Then using the right mouse button on the keyframe point will bring up some editing controls. So we can see here that I'm adjusting RGB. Um, and so I've got R, G and B faders. Um, you can also type in number values here on the right if you'd like. So the right click will close that window again. So I'm just gonna quickly go in, adjust the values, right click to close, right click to open, adjust the values, right click to close. So now if we play that, we should see the color change here being represented in our video. So now it's going red and then it's gonna go yellow and then green and so on. So we've got a lot of other parameter types. Let's just take a quick look at rotation. So again, select the rotation layer, left click to unlock, right click to place some keyframes. And with the rotation, when I right click to open up the parameters, you'll notice that we actually get given a set of rotaries here. So what we've tried to do in AI is present parameters on the timeline in a way that is logical for that parameter type. So now if we give that one a quick play, we're gonna see our colors change and also the rotation happening there as well as we'd expect. Okay, so let's add some other track types. So I've just closed the layer down with the minimize, maximize arrow on the left there. Click off of that fixture layer and then the button turns back to a track addition button. And we're gonna add in an audio track for now. So again, in my folder, I've got a piece of audio. So I'm just gonna bring that folder forwards and drag my audio onto the layer like so. So with the audio, the control is very simple. We purely have the master control to control the volume. And as you can see, when we right click in that track, we can clearly see what's going on with our audio levels there.
So we've got two more track types available to us, the control track and the cue track. So first of all, let's try the control track. So when I select the control track and I place a keyframe with the right button, if I right click on that keyframe to open up the parameters and we can see the different types of control that we've got here. Now the one I'm going to name is going to be the one in the middle here. So the pause, this means that the timeline will play up to this point and pause until I press the enter key to continue. We've got a stop function, a reset function which takes you back to the start of the timeline, a jump point function which allows you to set a time that the jump occurs and a place to jump to. We can turn the time code on and off from the timeline and we can even load other timelines from the timeline itself. Last but not least we have our Q track. So the Q track is really useful for making uh, notes or markers along your timeline. Now you see that as we add these cues they populate the list up here on the right so we can actually make them quite useful. If we right click on one we can give it a name. So I'm going to call this first one Q1 then maybe on the second one I want some kind of reference as to what's going to happen. So maybe we'll say a uh, green video and on that one I'm going to call it last queue. So as we're playing the timeline we can actually click on these queues up here in the top. Now we can tell which queue we're currently on. So red is the current queue Grey means the queue has been expended, and green are forthcoming queues. Um, so we can see that my uh, control track kicked in there. So if I give that a play, I can actually click on these queues, and we can see it's going to jump to those points in the timeline as well, which is really, really handy. Once I'm happy with the timeline, I can save the timeline using the disk icon down here at the bottom and if I then want to I can populate multiple timelines in here at the same time. Another useful trick that we have here, um, sometimes you might find that you've programmed for a specific layer but actually you need to change that layer. So just come back and select the layer, then this tool here allows us to choose which layer we're going to change everything to. So I'm going to change everything to layer 3 and you can see it's just copied all of our video and all of our parameters over to the available layer. The last thing to remember is that timeline overrules all. So if a layer is timelined, then you cannot manually control it at the same time. And this is shown on our performance page by giving us a red layer to indicate that the layer is locked out to timeline.